Uh, I will start with my talk. Uh, it's about Stargate. Uh, yes, but probably we will die of heat. I don't know. Ah, okay. Close it. For me, close it. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, this talk is about Stargate. Uh, we will see that uh, in a few minutes. And it's called an interstellar journey on RESTful APIs. So this is me. I'm Gabriel Cotelli. I work at Mercap and study in uh, Buenos Aires University. Um, and I'm, I'm a small talker science 2004. Okay, this is the talk agenda. I will do a brief intro to explain about the library. Uh, we will see the features. They are a simplified architecture of the library. Uh, some live demos and conclusions and future work. Okay, uh, what's Stargate? It's a mid-license library. Uh, it's supporting the creation of HTTP-based RESTful APIs. And this built on top of Sync, HTTP components, and Teapot. Uh, so we started using just plain Sync and Teapot, and we have uh, we use it. And we started having a lot of APIs, and APIs with many methods. Uh, we figured out that we need something of, on top because we need some features that were missing. So well, we add those features on top of of that frameworks. But first, we will talk uh, about, uh, about REST. Uh, REST is an architecture design for distributed systems. Normally, almost all the implementations that we know runs over HTTP, but it's not a requirement. This is a design. It's the design that the web uses. Uh, and when usually, you end up doing the, your API using HTTP because you have available that, but you are not constrained to just HTTP in the case of REST. And uh, have these principles. It's a client-server architecture. It's a stateless in the sense that when you send a request, you have to provide all the information needed to solve that request. Uh, it should be cacheable. The interface must be uniform. I have some notes on what uniform uh, it's. There are four uh, sub principles here. One is that uh, resources must be identifiable, have a unique, they have a unique uh, way to be identified. Um, the change on resources must be made through representations. Okay, a resource uh, you can think it uh, like an entity, like a model entity, and you change it about representations. You can uh, use X XML or JSON or something with more semantic value to change it. Um, the third one, uh, the API, an API with the REST principles must be self-descriptive, uh, but this is something that HTTP already provides because you are doing, I don't know, a GET request, and GET have some semantic. So in the same message, you are doing, you are giving a semantic. And the first one, it's a word I don't know how to pronounce, but I think that maybe nobody knows how. It's HATOS. It's, a, it's an abbreviation of hypertext as the engine of application state. And the idea is that the clients don't need to know uh, the possible transitions that the resource can make because this information is uh, contained in the responses. So you can uh, flow through the API using the information that you get back as response. OK, uh, now we will do a highlight on some of the features that Stargate provides. OK, these are the most important ones. The first one is content negotiation. Uh, we have some complex uh, resources in our APIs. And sometimes you need several representations for the same Resource as it's something like you can do with the standard web. Usually you get HTML, but you can get another representation for a web page. 
So in an, in an API, I can get, I don't know, a bond. And maybe I only interested in uh, just a few details. So I ask for a summary representation, or I can ask for a full uh, representation. And this is done uh, using content negotiation. We will see it now. Uh, the second one is Hato's, the unpronounceable word. Uh, I will talk about that later. Uh, it provides some uh, useful features for caching control. Uh, for now, are based in e-tags, but uh, the future work includes uh, more advanced features. Uh, it provides some kind of pagina pagination support when you are doing an API that will return a collection. The, if the collection needs uh, user managed, it can grow infinitely. So usually you end up paginating the result, and the library provides some way to uh, already capture that pagination information that the client must provide and use it to produce a paginated result. Uh, we have some support for cross-origin resource sharing because uh, now it's a standard in all browsers. You cannot do anything without that. And it had included some error handling. So there are a lot of uh, workflows that you have to respond in with a specific HTTP error in several cases. And the library already handles that cases. OK, here are a huge table. But uh, so we are supposing that the, our API in the top, uh, we have the supported media types. OK, these are the kind of things that I can send. I, can, I send that in an accept request, in an accept header in the request that I made. And these are the four media types that are implemented Okay, for the same endpoint. End uh, so I can ask. Uh, uh, this uh, syntax is for vendor media types. Okay, it's a way to attach semantic and not say just it's just JSON because if I say I accept JSON, I cannot. I have a JSON structure, but I don't know the semantic behind that structure. Okay, in that case, I say it's not just JSON. It's JSON with semantics of pet version one or pet version one one or pet version two zero zero or pet summary. Okay, so the client can request. And a specific media type that it will work and expect that the server uh, answer it. OK, so what is content negotiation? Uh, if you already use a browser, the browser is doing that all the time. When the sent, uh, when request is sent on the web, if you look at the internals, the server said, usually said, OK, give me HTML. But if you don't have HTML, you have another list of possible media types, including anything you want. OK, so the clients in the set uh, header would send, I am prepared to uh, understand that kind of thing. And the API will try to provide the best representation that can fit the client desires. OK, so we have some examples. If we act for a specific version of a, of a media type and the server can resolve it, we will have in the response the content type will match it. If we say, I don't know, just send me anything, this, the API can just answer with everything they want. In particular, our content negotiation algorithm trying to provide the latest version of the resource in the default representation. In that case, a one, you don't specify. Uh, you can say, OK, I just want application uh, pet mass JSON. And in that case, it will so resolve to the newest uh, version. And well, the other are just uh, sub, uh, another examples. You can use the version using semantic versioning. So if you ask for the representation with version one, I will get the latest one available of version one. Okay, this eases the client evolution because we can deploy a new media type with a new version and still maintain the old, uh, giving the client uh, developer to update it. And if you ask for something that is not support, like application XML, you will get some not acceptable. OK, uh, what's about Hato's? Hato's, it's a general term. Uh, in HTML terms, it's usually the links you have in the page that allows you to navigate. Uh, in an API, there are many ways to implement it, but 
usually you will have a list of links in some format. Uh, this is not standardized, but in our case, you will have with the representation you were asking a links uh, object, and you can say there is always a self uh, relation. The self represents the unique way to identify that resource. So you can save it, and if you do a get on that self, you will get the same instance every time. Maybe with another representation, but you will get the same instance. And you can provide another links. In that case, for, for example, this is a, a pet order, uh, a pet order representation. And you have two other links. One is used to complete an order, and the other is used to cancel an order. Okay. In the standard API, when it's not uh, totally restful, the client developer has to know beforehand what can do. You have to say, oh, I have to attach complete to the URL to perform the complete action. Doing in that way, you must grab the link that is providing complete. And if later the API decides to change it, and it's not more one slash complete, it's another URL, the client must keep working. OK, other features are caching control. Uh, the library already forces the user to specify how to calculate an ETAG. An ETAG is something like a hash of the resource. And the important aspect they have is that when the resource uh, changes, the hash must, the ETAG must change. So the intermediate servers can cache the representations. So if you already have an ETAG, I can request to the server, give me a new representation unless the ETAG is the same I previously have. So in that case, it wouldn't, it wouldn't transmit again the representation. Just let me, OK, it doesn't change. Use the one you have. OK, so the library already are, uh, are built to respond in, those, in the standard creation uh, request with the ETAG and have support for if none match and if match. Are, that those are using for um, optimistic concurrency control. You can say, you can, for example, do a delete request and say that delete the resource only if the ETAG matches the one that I have in the client. Because if someone else changes it, the delete must fail. So it's a, a way to implement concurrency control. OK. Um, the last one is error handling. Uh, when you are implementing API, there's a lot of situations that are mostly standard, like looking up a resource that is not, that not say, exist anymore, or trying to delete the one that doesn't exist, or sending an invalid parameter or invalid representation. Um, the framework already handles some exceptions and produce the appropriate responses and let the end user to configure the handler to saying, OK, when this exception is produced, handle it as it was and not found the error, or handle it as if found a decoding error. So the HTTP error codes are automatically produced in the right part of the workflow. It's not the global handler. If, we, I not, if I don't look up a resource, uh, I can have a 404 error. OK. <clears throat> As I mentioned before, this is built on top of uh, Teapot and Sync. It's using Sync for uh, processing HTTP requests. And uses, it's using Teapot for the routing. So when a request enters, uh, it's taken by Sync. And the Teapot server is configured to deliver it to the, to the uh, RISC, RISCful controller that will process that. OK, so we have the concept of an HTTP-based RESTful API that binds all together. And basically, it, it the user gives them a list of resources, uh, resource controllers. And the API install all the routes necessary on Teapot and makes the connection so the route will route to the right controller. And the controller is the one that will implement the logic. And for that, it will collaborate with a request handler that will, will handle all the HTTP stuff. And you have just provide some blocks for doing the real job. If I create in a pet, I have to provide a provide block that 
uh, once I recall the representation, for example, a JSON and create an instance of pet, I have to store it somewhere. Okay, that is the part that the user must implement. <clears throat> okay, I will do a live demo. I have some APIs prepared. First, I will start the server. Okay, here I'm saying if I found the mouse. Okay, this is a RESTful API. This is configuration, okay. Started in that port and served at that location. Usually in production, this will be the domain. And install that controllers. Okay, we will hide. This is a crazy API, but it's just for the demo. We will have some way to get America, South American currencies, uh, pets, and pet orders. Okay, so I will start it. Now, and now I will use another image as client. But first, you can I can use the browser also. The first API I will show is not a RESTful one. It's just an old style API. Okay, it's an API. I can get a list of currencies. And I am only getting some JSON when information, but no links. So I don't know what can I do with these currencies without reading the documentation. For example, I can access a specific one. And I need to know beforehand that I must chat the ISO code. OK. Yes. Uh, OK. A little more. Okay, this is a, a resource instance. And I can also ask for the banknotes that are valid. Okay, and I need to know that or reading the documentation or doing it uh, from memory because the API is not helping me to discover that information. I will quit the full screen because okay. Here we have another Faro image that we use as a client. Okay, for that I use in just sync client. Uh, so in that case, I will uh, using the base URL I provide. I will create a new pet. Okay, this is the media type, one of the, one, the media types the API support, uh, and this is the representation. Okay, so now I made a request. I, in this case, it's a post request, and the response, you can look up the headers, already includes an e-tag, and the location feeder. I can use this location header to go and search for this specific instance. And the response body in that case is created. Okay, so we have some links here. In that case, it's only self, because I just created a pet. But uh, you can use it to, uh, in the following example, we'll see a more complex workflow. Okay, now I will create an order. 
Okay, another is something like I want to buy a pet or if it's, okay, I don't know if buy is the right word, but you can go to a place and say I want that good, that uh, that pet. Okay, and now if you look at the headers, you will see that there are a self-link and another links. One that I can use to complete the order and a comments one and a cancel one. Okay, now I only need to know the starting endpoint because if I want to go to a specific pet, I have a link here. So I can click it and go to that specific resource without having to know in the exact URL format beforehand. Okay, the same here. I have uh, the order, the first order, which is uh, an old one. Okay, this is the order we just created. So it's in register status, and what can I do with that order? I can go to look at it specifically. I can complete it doing some action on this endpoint or I can uh, put comments, or I can cancel it. Okay, now I have the URL, it's uh, hard-coded here, but you, should, you must discover that for the response, okay? So to complete the order, yes. Yes, uh, you can think it at, maybe it's not more restful, but the, maybe the standard way to do that is to create a resource instance that represents the completion of the order. But not all the APIs are that way, and sometimes it's better just let the flow, uh, okay? There is no standard, the rest uh, principles don't, didn't mention exactly that. Okay, so it's a way that can be implemented. Another way is to create a resource instance representing the completion of an order. So you are creating a completion. But sometimes it feels forced. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes it's better just use the verb and it will flow better. Yes. Good question, okay. Uh, now we were talking about the URLs, but I can do put, get, post, delete. I can send an options. Options is another HTTP verb. If I send an options to that URL, I will get back the allowed method. Okay. If and if I try because I maybe like I will try to do a put, it will respond what not. It's not an allowed method, but you can do post or get or the available ones. So you can discover the API using the same uh, HTTP uh, provided affordances. Yes. Yes. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, I will repeat the question uh, if I understood it. Okay, we have only five minutes. Uh, 
Uh, yes, there is no problem. Uh, the parameters, how I discovered the parameters. What you call the parameters? The thing that I can put in the JSON, for example? Okay, so the API will pro provide me the allow with the media types that it supports. And these media types have some semantic attached. Usually in a document, so a common way is to provide some links to each media type so I can browse and read a human uh, documentation for that. Okay. Um, I think that I just created an order, but I don't remember if I completed it. Okay, so I will I will skip that. Okay, and I will cancel the order. So now I cancel the order. I cancel the order. What? Sorry, this is because I have have coded the links and not copying it on the fly. Okay, now I just cancel the order and the status has changed and I don't have any more the cancel or complete links. So the client can use this information to show the actions that the user can do. Okay, so the state of the application is in a way controlled by the server because it provides the valid actions. And in case I hard code the action by hand, uh, it wouldn't work because the routing will work, but the API must say, no, it's in, the cancer, it's in another state. You cannot change that. And probably you, you will get the conflict error. Question? Yes. Uh, a common problem in, in REST interfaces today is that you often receive all the data. For instance, you receive all the, the, the currencies with all the attributes, and often you just for instance, would like to show a list. And what is usually used is, is uh, a query kind of language, GraphQL, that means you, you ask the server with a JSON, I just want to have this attribute and this attribute. Yes. So you just receive a, a little bit of the response. And yes. That's never the we don't support. have a first class support for GraphQL. Uh, it's probably one of the future things that we will we work. Now you can pass it as uh, query parameters, but when you want to do some complex query, it's, uh, it gets short, okay? Now if, uh, you have to call for parsing query parameters and using that as filter, but uh, not so complex as a GraphQL a query. Uh, sorry, one more question. Yes. Um, so you mentioned in the beginning that um, there is a self link for yes. The, for the item, uh, my question here is from the like client side perspective. Let's say they they, they retrieve some items with the IDs, and then um, what I mean is, um, if you show, if you only keep the ID, yes, I cannot change the the way it's. Uh, it, you are, you will need to compose that in a new array. Yes, but yes. What I'm it's talking... limiting for the API point of point of view to the f evolution. Yes, I mean they, Be they because I to... will broke your client if I stop exactly. doing the slash the ID. Um, not, so, not sure I get that. My question is more about that I have the IDs and client side stored for some time, I don't know five minutes, and then later I need to reuse them. But then the links are changed and the status is changed, so I need to refetch. So I, I, I effectively doing one more fetch all the yes. time. Uh, if you if you have the link, the instance can change, and you have the e tag. So you send the last time I know that representation, this was the e tag, mm -hmm. and the server will not serialize again the object. Just respond to it. Okay, your instance is okay. Use the same. And so in, in case it change, it will receive an update. So you is... have to ask again, but it not necessarily will be fetched again. I don't know if that uh, 
answers your question. Maybe I'm, I misunderstood. I'm trying to understand if there is one more uh, fetch you need to do always to make sure your instance is uh, fresh uh, you know, on the client side. If you are creating it, you can request that then representation com comes back a response. But if you are, I don't know, in some screen, uh, you go to the barroom and come back, you have to fetch again. In the case, uh, just provide the last uh, e-tag you had. So the server didn't need to produce a new response and the intermediate cache will be used in that case. It will, even it will not uh, hit the server if it's well implemented because if not changed, the first cache will constantly ask for updates. So it will be in the cache. But you have to do a get. OK, thanks. I missed some slides, but I just to uh, say thanks to Merkab Software because they sent me to Europe to give this talk. So I have to mention it. <laughs> <laughs>